okay welcome back so in uh, this section we'll only discuss or i will present the case if i was the student this is how i would be presenting my case a 38 year old gentleman hailing from bengaluru who is a salesman by occupation presented with chief complaints of multiple dilated veins along the inner side of the left lower limb since 4 years and pain in the left lower limb since 2 years patient presented with complaints of multiple dilated veins along the inner aspect of the left leg so which indicates that it is the gsv territory it was insidious in onset and has been gradually progressive so it was initially only around the ankle and now it is progressed up to the lower thigh so i said that it started from the ankle and then gone to the thigh then aggravating and relieving factors it increases on standing for long duration and decreases on lying down now there is the patient also complains of pain in the lower limb which is dull aching type and is more towards the end of the day like we have discussed why this happens it is aggravated on standing and walking and relieved on lying down or wearing compression stockings there is no history of wound over the leg or bleeding from the dilated veins no history of trauma so it is not a av fistula no history of mass in the abdomen or no history of chronic constipation which is kind of ruling out the secondary varicose veins there no history of similar complaints in the past so when i say this i am talking about dvt or dvt related varicose veins no history of any surgical intervention in the past in the form of fasciotomy or orthopedic procedures which has led to prolonged immobilization he is not a known case of diabetes mellitus hypertension tb or asthma these are important if i am planning the patient for surgery no history of similar complaints in the family no history of collagen vascular disease in the family coming to personal history patient consumes a mixed diet he has a good appetite and sound sleep his bowel and bladder habits are regular and he has no addiction so basically he is not a smoker if he is a smoker you also have to mention it in the hopi an adult male with a bmi of 23.2 kg per meter square who is conscious and oriented his gait is normal okay so basically i am saying that he does not have equinus gait so that means it is not gone to such an advanced stage yet he has a pulse rate of 78 beats per minute in the right radial artery blood pressure of 110 over 78 mm of mercury in the right arm and supine position his respiratory rate is 18 cycles per minute and is abdominal thoracic in nature there is no pallor ictus cyanosis clubbing or lymphadenopathy he was examined both in supine and in standing position with adequate exposure of the groin okay that is very important adequate exposure of the groin using a t bandage now a t bandage is basically a small dressing with a waist waist this is normally used for um, perianal cases so there is a small bandage which covers the external genitalia and the scrotum so that the rest of the limb is exposed for your examination on inspection there are multiple dilated veins noted along the left lower limb along the gsv territory from mid thigh up to the ankle there are no skin changes noted and there is no pedal edema there is no local rise of temperature or tenderness along the dilated veins or surrounding it on doing the special test on doing the brody tendlenburg test there was both rapid filling and slow filling of the veins on doing the tests indicating that both the sfj was incompetent and there was perforator incompetence on multiple tourniquet test the there was incompetence of the perforators in the lower one third of the leg which is nothing but the cockets perforators and on doing the perthes or the modified perthes test there is shrinkage of the dilated veins on exercising which indicate that there is no dvt on doing the pratt's test blow out is again seen in the lower one third of the leg along the gsv territory so i am repeatedly telling that the perforators in the lower one third of the leg again on doing fegan's test the defect was felt in the deep fascia 10 cm above the medial malleolus which is still the lower one third and on doing the schwartz test a thrill was felt at the cephenofemoral junction suggesting it's a single column of blood on auscultation there were no murmurs heard there is no enlarged groin lymph nodes the opposite limb is normal no evidence of varicose veins on systemic examination of the abdomen there was no mass or free fluid noted so my diagnosis is that it is primary varicose veins of the left lower limb involving the gsv territory with sfj incompetence 
and perforator incompetence in the lower one third of leg with no DVT. So there are no complications, no DVT, no varicose ulcer and no lipodermatosclerosis. So I give it a CEAP classification of C2 which means there is only varicose veins without any changes. Etiology is that it is a primary varicose ulcer, uh, sorry primary varicose veins. Anatomy which involves the great saphenous vein territory and pathology is that of reflux. Okay, again which indicates that it's a primary varicose veins and not an obstructive pathology which is a secondary varicose veins. So for investigating my first test would be to do a venous doppler to confirm my diagnosis. So it is going to tell me whether there is reflux and also help identify the perforators. And because there are no tests to do the short saphenous vein, this will also help assess the short saphenous vein territory as well. Staging like we have discussed, there are no roles. Maximum that you can do is a USG abdomen, but in this case it's not indicated. And for management, I'm going to get the routine blood test done, which for which I'm going to plan for surgery. And I would like to operate on this patient. I would not like to give him compression uh, stockings because it's been there since quite some time and it won't give him too much of relief. So my management will be flush ligation with stripping up to the knee and perforator ligation in the lower one third of leg. And that would be how I would present, evaluate and treat this particular patient. Thank you.